So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? fans and welcome to for the love of paul mcgrath podcast on a really exciting afternoon well it's exciting now anyway at seven minutes past seven because aston villa are we're getting ready to see the aston villa lineup versus manchester city in uh, a game i'm looking forward to a win lose or draw whatever happens tonight i'm looking forward to it because patty when we think about 18 months ago I don't know would we've even done a team sheet tantrum for this game <laughs> because it might have been absolutely pointless, but it just goes to show where Unai Emery has brought us that, yes, we might go out and we might not win tonight. We're down Buendia, we're down Kamara, we're down Mings, we're down um, Matty Cash, we're down Ollie Watkins, and, and, and I'm sure I've left out one or two people. John there, McGinn. A, who, John McGinn, yeah, but there's a kind of... um. You know, we're going there with, 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 with hope in our hearts, I suppose, more so than, than expectation today to the to the Etihad Paddy. And uh, that's a nice way to be, I think. That's a nice way to be. Yeah, I see somebody, uh, I think it might have been Stato, said that uh, 13 games since we got something at City of Manchester Stadium, which is probably the, the last time I was there in about 08 or 09 when we scored Joey Barton, missed a penalty, I think, that day. Memory serves me correct. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it is a free hit. I don't care what anyone says, and obviously, Spurs dropping two points last night has helped us immensely with that. So, anything we get out of tonight is a bonus. I certainly won't be losing sleep if we're beaten by the better team. I might be uh, I might be a bit pissed off if we get beaten by Darren England, who's the referee tonight, and uh, it's John Brooks, I think, on, on VAR. Which... John Brooks on VAR, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've a good record with Brooks. Brooks is all right, yeah. Um, We'll uh, we'll see see what it brings us. A um, lot of reports that they're not going to have Haaland or De Bruyne. We'll find yeah. out. We'll find out in uh, a couple of minutes' time what way that's going to pan out. But look, regardless of whether they have Haaland or De Bruyne, they're going to have eleven world class players on the pitch that we're going to have to try and beat. And let's not forget how much we mauled them at Villa Park, and we spoke about it on Monday night. I was at that game, and. I think in my lifetime, it was our greatest ever performance by a Villa side. We absolutely tore them asunder. And uh, yeah, it was it was the most 5-0, 1-0 win I've ever experienced, <laughs> if that makes sense. Never felt like we were going to lose anything that night. And uh, oh, what I'd give for that tonight to, to increase that gap between ourselves and Spurs and ourselves and Man United and anybody else they want to bring into the, the equation at this stage. But it would just be nice just to leave a little bit of a buffer because if we got something tonight, I think it would be huge to go and get a win against Brentford at the weekend. And look, it'll put us in really good stead heading into the, the final four long, let's say. Yeah, I, I agree. And look, anything tonight, I think, uh, you know, anything at all tonight to keep that three-point buffer zone with Spurs. Because, <clears throat> look, I suppose, realistically speaking, if we, from here on out to the end of the season, and I know Spurs have a game in hand, but if we equal Spurs' results from here out to the end of the season, um, apart from this game, whereby they have to play Man, uh, Man City as well, and they lose to Man City. Let's say we get a draw today, and we just equal the results between here and the end of the season. Guess who finishes one point ahead? And I know that's very simplistic thinking, but that's really the way we should be looking at things now. We should be looking at it, you know, equal equal or, or better Spurs results um, against the teams that they've left to play and the teams we've left to play. And uh, I'm sure that's that that's that's one way of doing, uh, uh, you know, taking each game as, as it comes kind of situation. And I think that's going to be a nice mentality. There's a couple of um, there's a couple of people mentioning here in the in the chat that there's no Pau, no Moreno, no Bailey, or no T, no Tielemans tonight. Um, uh, there's a couple of people saying no Pau in there as well tonight. I I, I don't know. I haven't heard any. I've, it's funny. Um, I've heard more about the Man City lineup or what it's likely to be tonight than I have about the Aston Villa one. Um, which is strange because there's usually lots of stuff breaks about the Aston Villa team, but uh. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's today. I'm looking forward to tonight. I really am, and I think yeah. that you know, I think we're no matter who we have out in the field, we can we can give a team any rattle. And Joe says there we sound a bit down the dumps. I, I 
that that might just be because I'm wrecked tired. I'm up since about quarter past three this morning. But um, I'm not down in the dumps about this game. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Looking forward I am, to it. I am as well. It's just that the rushing home to get in from work to wolf down my dinner to get on here for five past seven. I'm just glad it wasn't a quarter day kickoff because I would have missed the Team G tantrum. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Some bright spark decides to dig up the road very near to the house here, and uh, uh, yeah, prolonged my journey home from work. Let's say so we're here, yeah. we're ready. We've got approximately four minutes before we we see the team. I I wasn't nervous at all until all these people are saying that all of to do damage above all else. We don't need to do damage to our. our uh, either so i'm hoping we have a decent side out Um it like everybody is surmising it's going to be zaniolo and uh duran i don't think it will be i think i think uh, morgan rogers will get the nod tonight with zaniolo to come off the bench and duran will start that's what i reckon just to share this again, guys, I, I shared this maybe about four weeks ago. Actually, it was just before it was just after the Fulham game when we beat Fulham. And it was the United, it was only had the United results or the United games in here and I added Spurs in as well. Um just wanted to show the teams in blue are teams that we both have to play. So that both teams have to play. So when I talk about bettering or equaling or bettering the results uh, that Spurs have, the reason I mentioned that is because we can see it here that uh, we play quite a lot of the same similar teams. Uh, from this point uh, point of view, um, those I've no idea where there's the tabulations for the uh, the points down here came from. I've messed with this so many times, uh, uh, putting in wins and draws. I don't know where they are. But if it finished up something like that, where we finished on seventy points, Spurs finished on 70, 67 and United finished on sixty two, I'd be over the moon with it. But um, I don't even see me United getting sixty two points the way this season has gone. Um, but uh, seventy points, I presume, would be the bar- would be the barometer for us for sure. Would be absolutely great. But yeah, I just wanted to highlight that that w- that Spurs still have Forest, City, Arsenal, Liverpool, and Chelsea to play. Um, and there, the reason that I'm highlighting those teams are we also have those teams uh, left to play as well. Um, so that's uh, that's an interesting one. I think we're about one minute away from the. Uh, from the teams being announced. Um, yeah, I'm with you, Paddy, as well. I think Morgan Rogers might play. Uh, there's a lot more. I've got I've got Twitter open here. There's a lot of people saying Pau Torres isn't isn't starting tonight. Um, yeah. I'm sure we will find out. Well, Jesus let's, let's, Christ, uh... 700, 751 <laughs> people in there. In, in, in 753 people in there. So the Sarko is saying the team is... Oh, I can't see it there because I was trying to share. Martinez, Kanza, Carlos, Langley, Dina, Luis, Tim, Zaniola, Rogers, Diaby, Duran. I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if that's the team. I would ask questions about where Potar is. is and I think we might have a team here. No, not yet. Uh, no team out yet. Uh, any moment now. Just about to tick over. Um, yeah, this I, I had a good laugh at this this earlier on today. Andy Hilly was saying that Man City are willing to let Calvin Phillips go for 30 million. Well, isn't that very good of them? Um, <laughs> 30 million for Phillips, the way Phillips has played um, since he's gone on loan. No, not for me anyway. That's somebody else's money I'd be spending if that was the case. Um, and Sarko is bang on the money. Because what we can see here is right in goals, Kanza, Diego Carlos, Longley, Dina, uh, Zaniolo, Timur Bunum, Douglas Luiz, Rogers, Diaby, and Duran with Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Olsen, Tielemans, Pau Torres, Alex Moreno, Chambers, Kessler Hayden, Bailey, and Kellyman on the bench. Going to be an interesting one. You're going to be an, I, I don't hate that team. I don't, I didn't expect it. Certainly didn't expect it, but I don't hate it. I can understand why, um, why uh, Tim Eric Boonham is in there maybe to to create a steadier base uh, at the bottom of the of midfield, but I don't hate that team. I prefer if Powell was there, to be honest with you. I prefer if Powell was there, before if John McGinn was there, before if Kamara was there, before if Watkins was there, before if Bailey was there, but I don't hate that team. Mm. Let's see what happens, I think. Yeah, look, it, it, the I suppose the main talking points is that we have no Pell Torres um, and we have no Bailey. They would be the obvious choices. Whether he has decided this is a game to manage Pau Torres' game time could be the case. I'm sure we'll find out later on. Um, you know, yeah, we've got... I, I, I think this is young Tim's first start. Would that be great? No, he started... 
Oh, we he's started in Ajax. Ajax, yeah. Started in Ajax, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. First, first league Premier League start here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and look, there's no, uh, I don't think there's any doubt where everybody is playing in that system. Um, and there's plenty of scope to go and change things. For me, you'd have to think that Bailey will shine from the bench. You'd have to think he would put on the carnage of, uh, of, um, what am I talking about? He's already there. He's already on. <laughs> Joanne oh, is there already. I was wondering where that yeah. was. Going. The carnage, <laughs> the famous carnage of Omari Kellyman. Is that what you? Yeah, but you, you know what's, you know what's throwing me there? The good. fact, the fact that Zaniolo is in is in the picture, and yeah, I obviously knew that Morgan Rogers is playing. So I suppose that's the one talking point. Does he put, does he put Zaniolo or Morgan Rogers off the right hand side if 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 it's going to be that kind of box midfield, um, or is it a four-two-three-one with the Abbey off one wing and Rogers off the other with Zaniolo in behind Joran? So, yeah, I, I I I just can't see that. But anyway, that's just me thinking out loud here as I'm looking at it because I I, I honestly wasn't expecting to see Pau Torres and Leon Bailey, arguably two of our best players, sitting on the bench, and we haven't even thought or discussed about what uh, Man City have done so let's see if those rumours are true um, yeah we'll take a look at that in a moment as well um, I was joking uh, so AVFC Stato put up and said that I can't remember what the stat was but I think we've we've 15 or 16 different players have scored for Aston Villa this season and the record the Villa have had is 18 within the season and I jokingly said that Robin Olsen would score against City and that young Tim would score against Brentford and that would that would cap it off so if we are looking for chaos and we want to replace one of the chaos twins just fire Olsen on up top like wh- how bad can it be it'd be better than putting him in goals anyway so um, mm. fire him on up top that's what I say and I jest I don't actually mind Robin Olsen in goals and Paddy we've over a thousand people watching this is absolutely <laughs> insane <laughs> Absolutely insane! Thank you so much to everybody. Um, Welcome. Look, I think with this team as well, we can we can admit that there's a lot of surprises in it. And look, we're always glass half full in these team sheet tantrums. For those of you, no, those new people who are joining us for the first time today, we're always glass glass half full. Look, we can obviously understand that people would be frustrated or would have their eyes wide open that Bailey, Pau Torres, and Tielmans aren't starting today. It's a it's an eye opener for us with regards to it. But I can see maybe method in the madness here. Um, mm. With regards to this, it's not the first time as well that, that Unai Emery has um, has changed up the team, specifically when we've got another game on Saturday um, against Brentford, which, by the way, for anybody who normally watches our team sheet tantrums, I'm going to be doing that from a beer garden somewhere in Kilkenny on uh, on Saturday, and it, it'll be rolling over after the Friday night, so I, I'm going to apologize, start apologizing from now on uh, until Saturday for the, for the potential state that I'm going to be in in that one, but... Um, yeah, like as, as as I can say, we would have we we would want would have wanted our full team in this game, but it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. And uh, as we always say, you know, who are we to question with Unai Emery? Uh, he's a far better manager than I will ever be, anyway. That's for sure. And um, we're going to take a look at the Man City team. I know a couple of you guys have already been popping things into the chat there as well with regards mm-hmm. to Man the Man City team. Um, the City team is out. One of the overlooked parts about Man City team is that they're going to have Ortega and goals. And that's not Ederson, and I think that's always good news. Obviously, we knew that Ederson wasn't going to make this, but um, I would have uh, when when Ortega went down la- against um, who was it at the weekend against uh, Arsenal at the Arsenal. weekend, and they were nearly ready to bring on Scott Carson. I was like, wouldn't it be great if Ortega was injured and Scott Carson <laughs> made a tri- made a return to Villa Park? Albeit, yeah. I didn't want it to be a triumphant one. But uh, they lie out is Ortega and goals, uh, Rico Lewis, Akanji, Diaz, and Gvardiol. Rodrigo and Bernardo Silva with Doku, Foden and Grealish and Alvarez up top. So everybody who said the uh, the De Bruyne and Haaland wouldn't be playing was dead right. They're not there. Haaland is on the bench. De Bruyne is on the bench. Kovacic is on the bench. Stones is on the bench. Sergio Gomez is on the bench. Nunes is on the bench. Oscar Bob is on the bench. And Su Soho, who I've got to be honest with you, is the first time ever laying eyes on his name ever, is on the bench uh, for them as well. Uh, so look, they've... they've 
rolled the dice and rested players. Yes, they've rolled the dice and they've brought in a World Cup winner in Alvarez. They've brought on a hundred million pound man in Grealish. They've uh, brought in um, Gavar- well, Gavardial. Uh, I think he might have started. No, he didn't start the last day. I don't think Gavardial in there. They've brought in Rico Lewis, somebody who is an England cap as well. You know, so they've they've got real stars that they can bring in. And that's not to say that we didn't have real stars that we could bring in as well. Colombian <coughs> international, uh, Italian international, uh, English underage international young Tim and then obviously bringing on Diego Carlos somebody who's plenty of European experience and Clement Longley as well who's won La Liga um, a couple of times with uh, with Barcelona so uh, yeah look it's it's a daunting affair Paddy don't like let's let's not beat around the bush it's a daunting affair but sometimes when you've got a team that's as changed up as ours and a team that's as changed up as theirs they can be exciting situations and I am looking forward to Duran crashing into Diaz and Akanji for 90 straight minutes today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that gets on. And more than likely putting pressure on, on Ortega and the goal as well from from, uh, from from the high press. We'd like to see that, I suppose. Whether he really decides to do it or not is another story. But uh, there's no curtailing the madness of, of Duran as far as I'm concerned. So if he sees something, he'll go and do it. Which is why he's in that half of the pitch and not playing at centre half. Look, it's it's. The, the, I think the playing field has leveled a little bit with O'Hallan and De Bruyne. They're obviously two of the best players in the world. Um, it's it's great that they're on the bench and not not starting the game. Um, I'm a little bit more enthusiastic about getting something out of the game with the, without them in it. But you can be sure they'll be springing from the bench at, at a later stage if needs be. And I mean that if needs be. If 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 they're winning the game two 0 I don't see either of them. Um, coming off the bench because yeah. they they'll they'll have bigger fish to fry in the coming weeks with with uh, Champions League and 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 big games. Uh, not that this isn't a big game, but they're they're there in reserve, ready to uh, ready to have a go at us if if needed. And hopefully it will be needed because that will mean that we are well in the game and and giving them a, a right rattle, which we can only hope. And pray for. <laughs> we never seem to get a bit of luck here in in this fixture, the away fixture. Never. So I'm, I'm hoping that finally um, that's going to come tonight. Obviously, for for the thousand one thousand one hundred and one thousand two hundred people, people watching. Um, this. All, all my it's family been, are man. All my family, easy. all my family are Man City fans. So winning tonight will make me very very happy. And I've really got to go up and get this blue short off before the match starts because. <laughs> I will not be sitting comfortable watching it if that's the case. Yeah. But yeah, it, for those 1,200 people, if you've never been here before, do subscribe. Just give us a, a like on, on, on your way out as well this evening. And thank you very much for uh, for dropping by on this. Uh, well, it's a miserable Wednesday night here, but uh, hopefully it's not wherever you are in the world. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree, Paddy. And look, I'm actually going to I'm going to start off the predictions here, and I'm going to say that um, I've always been of the of the opinion that you know anything out of this game is a positive. Um, you know, whether it's a point, if it's three points, look, there might be no pants in the post match podcast. <laughs> There's been a couple of those this year, you know, where the pants have just spontaneously flown off um, after a great result. I remember the Man City game. I was watching it in my mate's uh, house in Limerick, um, and he was an Arsenal fan, and we were obviously playing Arsenal the week after, and uh, the two of us were watching it together, and both of us were literally wide-eyed at how well we played. And a day where I expected us to maybe sneak a draw, most likely get beaten, Kind of the same feeling I have again tonight. Now, obviously, we had a full strength team that day, um, but you know, as you said, Paddy, we did go out and systemically we we control that game. The biggest player I think that's missing tonight isn't actually Ali Watkins. I don't think it's Pau Torres as well. Albeit, I would like to have Pau Torres in. And the reason being, I'm not saying it's Pau Torres is we've played a bit with Pau, Pau Torres this year. The biggest player that's missing for me is John McGinn because if you go back and you watch the highlights, and you probably will have time to do that, watch the highlights on Villa TV or wherever you can find it on, on YouTube. Um, of that game, John McGinn ran the show, ran the show in midfield that day, and he was the outstanding player for me when I watched it back again. So missing him is a massive, massive miss. Huge. I'm going yeah. to start off with the the score predictions. I'm going to say this is a one one tonight, and I think uh, I I think I would shake hands on that now and not play the fixture if we could <laughs> if we could agree on that. Um, there's... Yeah, well, the the one the one thing that you will get agreement with is that I think it's going to be exactly that as well. I'm going for a 1-1. I, I think we'll be 1-0 up after an hour and we'll see Foden or we'll see Haaland and uh, De Bruyne sprung from the bench to get to get them away with a point. Um, 
And you know what? Snap your hand off her, as you said. That's if, if we can get anything out of this game today, it would be magic. To win it would be absolutely incredible. And I might even break out a can in the post match if we uh, if we if we win this one. So fingers crossed. It's 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 gonna be a tough one, but yeah, I'd I'd go for one all as well. Yeah, well, I will be having a can during the game because I need conditioned to deliver for the weekend that's ahead. So uh, <laughs> I will be tonight is first night of, of uh, training for that. Um, but uh, Nigel is saying Olsen and goals updated. No Emmy. Uh, are, are we are we joking about oh, that or is that real? Uh, uh, I bloody hope so. Because if, if that two, two uh, people have said it. Oh yeah, uh, Robin Olsen misses out. Uh, Emmy misses out through illness. I'm going changing my score prediction. What? I was I, yeah, Emmy's out through illness. Oh, Ra- uh, update, yeah. Robin Olsen was starting goals for Aston Villa. Emmy misses out through illness. I was just about to finish up the podcast there. Um, uh, just edit the stage. There it is. Yeah, update. Robin Olsen starts um, Emmy out through illness. I wonder who comes onto the bench then. Do you know what? It could be a situation where by it's so late that we can't bring someone onto the bench. Um, now we have to go with... Yeah. I think that's that's probably the situation here. Um, but now with Robin Olsen starting, um, I think we will be lucky to get yeah, one all draw. I think we'll be lucky to get anything out of this now. And uh, and look, yeah, that's a big in, deflation. In, we're talking deflation. about an in, talking about an international goalkeeper here, but now it's a best goalkeeper trouble. in the world. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, what I'm talking about is replacement. I know he's an international goalkeeper and very respected goalkeeper, but he is not the world's number one. So no. that, that is bitterly disappointing at this stage. So what, look, what can you do? We just we've just got to roll with it now, and it is what it is. Um, unfortunate that it was this late, but they obviously he obviously has been unwell, and they gave him every opportunity in the warm up to to see if he come through it, and it obviously hasn't worked out that way. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one now, and I'm gutted. I'm gutted that he's not there. What All that's going through my mind at the moment is. And I wish I wish I could remember the international game. We were texting through with a with a mate of ours, Noel Connachton, as well. Not to be com- confused with um, uh, I can't even remember what the <laughs> Noel Cunningham. Yeah, um, we were watching some international game, and Olsen had an absolute stormer. He would have blocked marbles that day. Um, yeah, as Caroline says, someone pray for Noel Connachton. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope. Look, as I say, it's just the fact that, and and we're not overly like as I say we're not we're not trying to put two feet into Robin Olsen I want him to go be man a match today I want every player to go be man a match today for Aston Villa this like I, I'm still excited to watch this game albeit I am a bit deflated and the only reason I'm, a defl- I'm deflated is because I truly believe that I mean Martinez is if not the best goalkeeper in the world in the conversation for the top three for sure um, and there is no there's no doubt in that he's a World Cup winner he's a um, you know, Golden Glove winner. He's a uh, what you call him. The, the he's he's won best goalkeeper in the world FIFA FIFA awards, and like he he is our probably like of the team that's gone out tonight. He's our best player on that field, and now he's not there. And he's not there with John McGinn. Yeah. And he's not there with McCamara. He's not there with Ollie Watkins. Watkins and so on, so on, so on, so on. So, so on. Torres. Yeah. So we're we're going into this game missing all our best players. Yeah, yeah. And put it like, this way, I will definitely. Definitely be breaking up. I'll probably be breaking out the twenty-five-year-old kid begging if we win this one um, later on for the post-match I think, podcast. I think, but, uh, I think this has just changed my mind, and I might be joining you in a tipple during the match because <laughs> my nerves are just all of a sudden just gone through the floor here, and I'm, I'm wondering well, what the hell. And, and you know, for for those of you who come to us for your for your uh, weekly dose of of hopium, optimism, copium, whatever whatever kind of drug you feel that we sell here in this podcast. Let's think about it this way. I'd prefer Amy Martinez to be out injured today or to be out ill today than to be ill on Saturday against Brentford. Because if we follow the logic that we're hoping to get a result tonight, and, and you know, this one isn't being chalked up into the into the uh, column where we're going, let's we really need to get a win tonight, but Brentford is. If there was any any kind of like and we've seen with the rotated team here, if there was any kind of uh, issue with Emmy Martinez, you can see why he was pulled just before uh, before the game. Now, I'm as I said, the biggest thing for me is I'm more interested to see if we can name anybody else on the bench if one of the traveling party can be named on the bench. Um, but I'm not sure how that works, and and mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if it was too late and we couldn't. So, um uh, yeah, just, uh, well, well, they've yeah. put in that update. There's no update to to the bench, and Martinez is still on that team sheet, as far as we can see. But 
Um, I, I think once you've named your team or named your squad, I don't think you can add anybody else in regardless of injury. You can replace who's on the pitch without losing a substitute, but you can't add somebody else on, onto the squad as far as I know. This uh, I, I have to call it. Look, listen, thank you so much for always coming in and watching as well. Uh, uh, IJL 1982, but the conspiracy theory has started that Emery has pulled him because <laughs> uh, Emmy Martinez called him out and rolling over. And if you believe that, don't, hey, listen, I'm not here to, to yuck your yum. I'm not here to shit in anyone's parade. I don't think that that's what's happened, but I'm 100% here to be proven wrong with regards to that. And I'm not calling you out or trying to denigrate you in any way. Mm -hmm. um, if that is the reason, well, then there has to be, a, there has to be a, um, a, an investigation into that or as to what's happened or has somebody has to ask the question on it. And hopefully that's not the case. But um, yeah. if the club say he's ill, then you know, until anything else different comes out, I think that that's uh, that, that's what we have to look at, I suppose, really, yeah. Do we, do we look um, at Douglas Luiz or Esri Konza now to step up and be the captain on the day? And, and oh, Esri Konza, captain him. Captain that yeah. man, that man. I, I said when Tyrone Mings went down at the start of the year, I actually specifically called out Konza and said, I don't think he had, I, I wasn't sure whether he had captain material in him. Um, and I called out John McGinn, and boy, of the two of them pro uh, proved me wrong. Now, I didn't call it out in Fire and Brimstone. I just kind of asked the question. And the two, Those two guys have rose above everybody else, I think, for me this season. Um, it's probably going to be Douglas Luiz that has the um, has the, the armband. But I would give it to Ezri Kanza. He's on the crest of a wave. He's just after scoring the Pushkas winning goal last week. He's after playing for England, um, which is a boy a dream of his. Give him the captain's armband and let him puff his chest out, even in these circumstances, mm -hmm. and uh, and see and see what happens. You know. But uh, James is saying that yeah. Gauchy's on the bench. We knew Gauchy was on the bench. Yeah, Gauchy is on the bench. Can, anyway, we add, yeah. can we add the additional traveller? I don't think he can add the additional traveller once the team sheet goes in. So he's obviously yeah. gone down just after the team sheet or the decision has been made, or maybe there. Was nobody else to come in? I think so. you can. If, if memory serves me right, recently or not recently, but like in the last however 10, 12 years, I remember Darren Fletcher getting a dose of the scuts. Uh, literally <laughs> after they'd done the warm up, and uh, he didn't come out, and they were able to name somebody else in the bench. Now whether that's happened, uh, whether that's that loophole has been changed since, I don't mm. know. But um. Mm. Yeah. Well, I suppose the, the, like there's there's a few worrying things. Tielemans is not even in the squad. Sure, he's not. Tielemans is in the squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Is oh no, right? there's there's no like Tielemans is in the squad. So I'll bring up the team again. There, just uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. this is the team. Sands, Eli, Emmy Martinez there. So obviously Olsen starts and goals. We've got Tielemans, Pau, Alex Moreno, Chambers, Kessler, Hayden, Bailey, and Kellyman. Um, yeah, I, I, and maybe a another whoever's. I, I I I genuinely can't even think of anybody else who would have been able to travel with the squad, considering that our under twenty ones played last night. Like as, last night, yeah. Last night as well, you know, and they were pretty stacked with with a lot of the younger players. So I, I can't even think of anyone who wouldn't be, who would be able to come onto the bench as well. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Diego Carlos is vice captain. Who's saying? Who are we saying is captain? There was it named. Um. You have, you have to think it's Conza or, or Luis. I, I don't see anybody else. Daniel there. Hobson is dead right. Now we're glad there's two goalkeepers <laughs> in the bench. For, for once, we it's paid off having two goalkeepers. Uh, see, once again, you should never question Unai Emery because he always has the ace up his sleeve for any eventuality. And PSK, PSK is our resident ITK. Um, often fires stuff in there as well cryptic my mystic messages with regards to transfers he says it's a stomach issue for emmy um yeah uh, so uh, let's see what transpires on that as well um yeah and there he is he's awake connachton is awake this could be a huge goal difference swing now well let's i think, see. It, I think I, I might have to turn off my phone for the evening Neil. yeah I, I i yeah no no offense i'm going to mute in that group anyway for the next <laughs> two hours there's absolutely no way i'm gonna be in there <laughs> Nolan's Noel, uh, going to give us a blow by blow account of of, of Olsen's performance. <laughs> what I will say is the last time that um, last time that Robin Olsen played in goals for uh, for Aston Villa against Manchester City, we went two 0 up uh, on the last day of the season, and mm. we lost three two. Um, then so then Gerard took off Coutinho and cost us the game. It wasn't yeah. Robin Olsen anyway? 
yeah, 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 exactly. So hopefully we have this. He has the same effect uh, today. And as I say, I want as that post said that Robin Olsen man a match went and you see. I would absolutely be the happiest man in the Northern Hemisphere if that was to happen. Every, even though Connor's going to be Northern happy with Hemisphere. that, Neil. Everyone is going to be happy with that. It's yeah. it, Look, it, it's, a, it's a sucker punch to the stomach here. It, fe it feels that way. But look, what what can we do? We, we we started off by saying this is a free hit. So if 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 we if we lose today, we've just got to take it on the chin and jog on because there's bigger fish to fry, as we know. This is one we're not expected to, to win. So... We've just got. We've just got to look. We can't do anything from where we're sitting, or most of the people in in the comments there are, are not sitting in the stadium. So it, it's up to us to get behind them and 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 look. It's probably not the best thing to be doing is calling out Robin Olsen as much as we really want to be uh, sitting with Emmy Martinez between the sticks. We have an international goalkeeper at our disposal, as you say. He played very well in that game against Manchester City a yep. couple of years ago. So let let's uh, let's bring it uh, let's bring it on and uh, fingers crossed yep. we can we can come out of this unscathed. As long as they're wearing, as they've got the Aston Villa crest on their on their uh, their shirt, look, they're going to get a hundred percent of uh, of the ups and downs from me anyway today. You know, but I'll always want every player to do well, and Robin Olsen was no um, no different to that. Um, as are any of the players that have been brought into the squad today, whether it be Zaniolo, Duran, um, Dina. Uh, young Tim as well. It's going to be a huge game for a lot of those players, yeah. you know. So once again. Uh, through, uh, numerous times during the course of this year we've asked for leaders to stand up but when Tyrone Mings went down as I mentioned previously around Christmas time uh, when things started to started to, to, to turn south very very temporarily against Manchester United we looked for leaders to stand up we came back we beat Sheffield United 5-0 albeit being Sheffield United on one of the most on a day that will stay with me forever the day that we interviewed Paul McGrath and uh, you know there's been times this season whereby you know, come at the hour, come at the man has happened. And that has been Zaniolo against West Ham, um, against what you call him in the, um, in the Europe, against Sheffield United as well. And, um, did he Most not come star. on and stick one in uh, Mostar as well? Yeah, I'm sorry, John McGinn uh, against Mostar as well. So, look, this team has, has has a decent set of stones on it. So let's see uh, if we can. And that's no pun in the fact that the other team actually has a stones on it uh, as well. But uh, let's see if we can pull one out of the fire in this one today. And I was going to do a rundown of the scores, but I think I'm going to just leave it. We're going to we're going to do this thing she without the without the telecaster scores results there because number one, we're 32 minutes into this podcast and I have to walk a dog. No euphemism in there or no uh, no um, yeah. double entendre in there. I actually have to go walk my dog before I sit down and watch this game. So I think we're going to leave it at that, Paddy. We've nearly 1,400 people watching this podcast. Amazing. Hello Brilliant. and thank you to everybody on, on uh, Twitter, or the, the site yeah. formerly named as Twitter. Um, if you do like this and you want to catch us more often, hit the follow us. And also, uh, a lot of the times we just go live on YouTube as well. So you can go over there and follow us on YouTube too. Hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing to do uh, that there. But appreciate every single one of you that are here. For those of you who are regular listeners, as always, we appreciate your time. For those who are listening in for the first time, really appreciate you too. Time we can never give back to you guys. We can give you bad podcasts. We can give you good podcasts. <laughs> we can give you drunk podcasts. We can give you podcasts that make no sense, which is 99% of them. But we can yeah. never give you back the time that you guys give to us. So I really appreciate that. And, let, and uh, let's not forget while those, those 1,355 people are still there. We're doing a live show in Birmingham on the 19th of April. Check our socials and you'll find a link to, to purchase tickets for that. If Absolutely. you're interested in coming along and having a bit of fun and crack uh, Irish yeah. style in, in Birmingham on the 19th of April, you'll find the two of us there along with some friends. So uh, don't forget that now. <laughs> Yeah, in absolutely. The absolutely.com for the Love of Pomegranate podcast. But we're going to bow out on that, guys. Thank you so much to everybody. Really appreciate your time as always. Look, we'll be back again with a post match podcast. It could, we could be doing it through our hands like this afterwards, but we will be back and uh, we will chat to you afterwards. And, and Dave, it could be one of those ones as well. After the <laughs> Arsenal game, we had one of those, went on for nearly two hours. And I had some fun watching it back because when I watched it back, I heard some of the things for the first time that I said on that podcast. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, as I say, could, if we win tonight, I can guarantee you it could be a long one in the post match, and we could be breaking over the open the Glenlivet, or we could be breaking up in the um, the the Kilbegan from the from the press inside. So uh, we'll see about that. But anyway, thanks so much everybody for your time. Rest up, have uh, get your beverages and get your snacks ready for the game. We'll see you back here right on the final whistle directly after the game. Thank you so much. Here's to an Aston Villa tonight, win tonight. Stay safe, stay healthy, and up the Villa. Up the villa.